This is Support is Sexy, episode 553. Let's talk about how entrepreneurship is a lot like mountain biking. Welcome to Support is Sexy. I'm your host, Elaine Fluker, entrepreneur, author, and founder of Chic Rebellion Media. Five days a week, Monday through Friday, I bring you inspiring women entrepreneurs who share their wins and lessons to help you take your business to the next level. Here we go. Hi, everyone. Welcome to a new episode of Support is Sexy. I'm excited to have you here. You know, it just would not be the same without you. And if you've been listening for a minute, you know that I am currently in Sofia, Bulgaria, where I've had an interesting time, great time, challenging time. It's been an amazing month, a lot of growth during this month. And one of the things that I've been doing more than maybe ever in my life, but certainly within the past, let's say, year or so, even though I work out quite a bit, we have done a lot of physical activities here in Sofia. So everything from hiking to bike riding to running, we're training for, a few of us are training for the marathon, a half marathon in Cape Town, which is the next city that we're going to, actually within a week or so of when you'll probably listen to this. Actually, I don't know. It might already be happening when you listen to this. In any case, we are training for a marathon. So we've been doing a lot of long distance running, lots of activities. But one of the things that we did was a 24 kilometer or 14.9 mile bike ride, not bike ride. Let me fix that. Mountain biking on Vitosha Mountain in Sofia, Bulgaria. It was, I would say, the hardest thing that I've done, especially physically, in, I mean, as long as I can remember. If we knew, a lot of us said there were five of us in the group, I believe. If we knew how difficult it was going to be, we probably. Well, we would have thought twice. I won't say we wouldn't have done it. For most of us, we thought would have thought twice. For me, I might have been like, that sounds too dangerous. I might break something because it was a very challenging ride. And the funny thing is, you know, as a city girl, mountain biking, I'm thinking, oh, we're going to be on mountain bikes, but we're going to be on a nice paved trail or there might be, even if it was a dirt trail, I didn't think it would be deep dive down the hills and rocks where you can barely hold the bike steady. It was honestly the most challenging. I think it was about... Was it a five-hour bike ride? Several hours. Definitely was over an hour because, again, 14.9 miles. There were places where we couldn't ride. We had to walk. It's all nature, so there were places that were muddy so the bikes wouldn't get through. It was something else. We came out dirty and messy and smelly, and I will tell you, it was wonderful. Again, the most challenging, but at the end, we were all high-fiving like, wow, we did it. That was amazing. None of us expected this. What a challenge. And there were so many moments during the ride where, of course, because this is where my mind is, I was thinking, this is so much like entrepreneurship, like this push that you have to give yourself and these moments of being scared, certainly these rocky roads, right? So I wrote down a couple of things. I did it right after the bike ride, sharing it with you today. But I wrote down a couple of things that really popped up for me that felt like entrepreneurship is a lot like mountain bike riding. So here it goes. The first thing is your bike is your business. You have control. You steer. You decide what direction you want to ride on. The rocky road, the smooth road, or even when the road surprises you, you still have control. So when I was riding the bike, it took me a minute. Well, I know how to ride a bike, but I haven't been on one, certainly in those conditions ever, but been on one in general in a long time. And spinning isn't the same as cycling, riding a bike, right? So you're out on this road, this uh, path or wherever we are, grass, rock, gravel, all kinds of different terrain, if you will. But I had to get to the point and it took a while to be like, you know what? I am in control of this bike. This bike is not riding me. I am riding this bike. I have control. Because there were times too where you're riding along the path and you look over to the right and it's a big drop basically. So I had to stay focused on the road and just say, I have control. I am not going to fall. Actually, I didn't even think I'm not going to fall. I kept thinking, I have control. I'm going to stay on the road. I'm going to stay on the road. Because once you start thinking, I'm not going to fall, your mind here is fall, right? So you got to be aware of that with anything that you do. Don't think I'm not going to blank. Your mind is thinking blank 
whatever that blank is. Instead, I'm focused on the road. I have control. I'm in control. So in your business, the same way, there are moments where we might feel we can't control everything that happens in the world. But remember, you are in control of your business. You are steering this. You decide which direction you want to go in. You decide when you want to change direction. You don't have to stay on the road that is the most difficult all the time. Sometimes the challenge is good. Sometimes you're just in it because that's the way you decided to go and you can make a different choice. Another thing is, as I mentioned, we all talked about, gosh, if we had known that it was going to be that crazy, we might not have done it. So it was good that we didn't know. So with entrepreneurship, think about it. You will encounter hills that you never could have prepared for. So even one of the gentlemen in our group, Yash, does bike ride or uh, mountain biking. He even said it was a challenge for him. So even if you're fit and you're ready and you have everything prepared for your business, you have everything together, you think you got it quote unquote perfect, there's always going to be a hill that comes along that you maybe never could have prepared for or prepare for that exact hill, right? You do what you can to be prepared, mountain biking, anything physical, you do what you can to be in shape. But once you get in it, there's nothing like being in it. You never know what it's going to be like what you're in it. So you do your best to prepare for it, but then you don't know what kind of hills are really going to come your way once you're in action. So do your best to be prepared. When that hill comes, you just say, I can do this and you go after it. Another thing that I did was model the success of those who have gone before you and adjust accordingly. So as I mentioned, Yash was one of the guys in our group who has done mountain biking quite a bit. He's from, I want to say Denver. And then uh, Asin, who is the leader of our group, who's here in Bulgaria, led us through this crazy road. I don't know. First of all, I don't even know how he remembers his way through the mountain. He was taking us through bushes and all kinds of craziness stinging bushes, all kinds of stuff. Anyway, he was the leader. So they were usually in the front. And at times when I was right behind them, even if from the back, it looked crazy. The way that they went over a bridge or around some rocks or went up on the side of something, I tried to model their success. I tried to do the same thing because if they went, they're on a bike like I'm on a bike. Yes, they're more experienced, but they plowed through, they went through. A lot of the times I did the same thing and I was successful too. So of course, there's something to be said of not always looking outside or looking at other people in your business or what other people are doing. But I do believe in modeling the success of others. If there's someone in the space, I'm writing a book. So say there's plenty of authors whose work I admire. I look at what they're doing. I look at how they're promoting their book. I look at how they're enjoying whatever they're doing with their book. I want to model that success. And not that I'm going to do the exact same thing, because even with the bike riding, I might have gone the same route as Asin and Yash did, but I didn't do it the exact same way because I'm a different person. I'm me. But I saw that way seemed like it worked for them. They were successful. In this case, they didn't fall and break anything. Uh Uh-huh. I'm going to try that way. Now, there were other times though when they did go a certain way and I thought, no, that doesn't seem right for me. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to walk or I'm going to go a different way or whatever it is. And you adjust accordingly. But you can look at the success. In fact, I think you should look at the success of people in whatever space you're trying to move forward in. Look at what's working for them. Make adjustments that work for you. Now, another thing to note on the opposite side of that, yes, there were times when I was very successful, many of us were, going around some of those dips and rocks and curves and bridges and all of that, but there was times for each of us, did anybody, no, everybody, everybody, well, wait, did a sin fall? I don't think the leader of our group fell. Everybody else fell. We all fell. Some fell in bushes. I literally rode into a bush. The bush caught a, sort of caught me. It was very strange. I just lost control of the bike. That was before I knew I had control, right? But you will fall. That's the thing. I mean, fall. when I say fall, I have bruises still on my knee and my ankle from that ride, and I love it. Not that I love a bruise. What woman likes a bruise, right? But the fact that I feel a little bit of pain or tinge there, it reminds me of this, it's kind of sick, reminds me of this great challenging time that I had on the bike that. Yes, I did that. I did that. I challenged that or I conquered that challenge. I did that. I made it out with a few bruises. So that's the thing. You will fall. But once you survive your first fall, you're less afraid. So after I rode into the bush, I was like, okay, I fell, kept going. That was fine. You survive that first fall. You keep going. You see that it ain't going to kill you. In some situations, especially with this bike riding thing, it could have, but it didn't. You made it through so you can ride again. And I will tell you, I'm excited about riding again wherever. Who knows where it'll be the next time. But the fact that I did it that time and really enjoyed the challenge, I'll definitely do it again. So go ahead and do whatever it is that you want to do in your business, in your life, whatever you want to create, whatever you want to experience. No 
knowing that you're going to fall, but that you will be okay. If you can get up, you can try it again and keep moving. Another thing I noticed during this ride, you know, there were, like I said, a lot of dips and uh, I'm calling them dips. I don't know if that's even what they're called, but they were dips to be deep, steep hills full of just craziness, all kinds of nature, rocks, gravel sticks, anything you can think of that you don't want to ride your bike over, it was there. The thing I noticed though was the times that I did just go, if I were following the guys in the front, if I just went over it and just, you know, like, okay, I, you, you know you can fall, but you're going to go and think in your mind, I'm not going to fall. I got this, I got this. And you just go, it would be great. I would do it, I would get through it. But as soon as I stopped, whenever I stopped at the top of a hill and tried to think my way through it, Fear would set in right away, and that would make me say, I'm not going to do it. I can't do it. I'm going to get hurt. I tense up, and then I walk down, which is fine. It's better to, once you're scared like that, you it's better to walk it out, I think, because if you go through it too scared, you know, you don't want to hurt yourself. But when I would just go, when I would go for it, still knowing the danger, of course, there's that awareness there, but I would just say, I'm just going to go. I'm just going to go. I'm just going to go. Those times I went through it, but as soon as I stopped and started thinking about it too much when it wasn't, when other people had done it, so I saw them get through it, so it wasn't like I was jumping off a cliff, but there were times when I stopped and I thought, dang, I should have just kept going. I probably could have made it through that. But once you start thinking, as Mel Robbins talks about that five second rule, once you give yourself that five seconds, the negativity starts to jump in your mind and it's just the way we're uh, wired, right? It's trying to keep us safe. Don't do that. That's not safe. I don't know. You might hurt yourself. So in business or whatever you're doing, when you're standing at the top of the hill, don't overthink it right? You, you think about how you want to get there or what you want to do or what might work, but don't overthink it. Sometimes you just got to go, see how it goes, go down that hill, make adjustments on the way because you will tense up, you will talk yourself out of it if you wait too long. Now, another thing, as you're going off that hill, remind yourself along the journey, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. Even if you're scared, even if you're going over that cliff and it enters your mind, what the hell am I doing? Still think to yourself, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. That is honestly what I kept saying, especially the cliffs were scary, but there were only moments of that. But there were sometimes along a long trail, as I mentioned, where if you look over to the right, it was basically a drop. I know that's called a drop, a drop, like just straight down trees and stuff, it was just a, I don't know, just a drop. If you went off the edge, you were going off the edge. If you went too close to the edge, you were going off the edge. So I tried to stay over to the left and I had to keep saying to myself as I was riding, I can do this. I can do this. I'm safe. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. I don't know what everybody else was saying to themselves. Maybe they were having a great time. I was too, but I was focused on staying on that road. I can do this. I can do this. So for you, again, sometimes along the journey, you have to say to yourself, I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. You're in school, you're studying, you're going back to school, you're getting that degree, you're getting a certificate. I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. You're going after another position in your company, maybe. Maybe you have a business, but you're also working too, and you're listening to the podcast. You too. I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. Maybe you are ending a toxic relationship. I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. Whatever it is, don't forget to have that playing in your mind. You can do this, you can do this, you can do this. Might look messy, you might come out dirty, you might come out bruised like I did and be sore for a couple of weeks. You'll get through it. You can do it, you can do it, you can do it. And the last thing, of course, is to have a crew to support you. You know I was going to mention support. We are all about it around here. Yes, you can do it, but you can do it even better when you have people there to catch you when you fall or pick you up when you fall in the bush or in the stinging nettles or in the anything else. When you have people there to pick you up, to support you, to tell you you can do this, you'll get much further having people there. Having those crew of people there, Laura, Rachel, Yin, Yash, Asin, myself, I think that's everybody. All of us have now, first of all, shared this experience together. So we talk about it, laugh about it, the fact that we made it through it. But then also we were there for each other. If one fell behind, someone go back and look, or we would wait or say, we're so-and-so. It was really great to have that group to go through it. I never, ever would have done that. First of all, I would still be lost on the mountain somewhere if I were by myself. But having a group of people there and knowing too that in other ways they were scared too, or that we were all uncertain, except for our leader, obviously, we were all 
all uncertain about where we were going or what path and what this is going to be like. And oh my gosh, it's so challenging. So having people in it with you, having that support, whatever that looks like in your life, certainly in your business, anything that you're creating, you want to have people around you who are either going through the same thing or who have been through the same thing or, and can look back at you and say, it's going to be okay. Keep going. You can do this. Make sure you surround yourself with people who support your crazy journey, your bumpy, rocky ride. I will say a bonus, wear a helmet. We all wore helmets. Wear a helmet on this journey because it is going to be a bumpy, rocky ride. But again, you can do this. All right. So I hope you enjoyed that episode. It was honestly a great, fun experience. I definitely will be doing mountain biking again. Again, maybe it won't be as treacherous as this journey was, but it was super fun, a great challenge, and a great way to rethink again about how I'm moving forward in my business. So I hope you'll do the same because you can do this. All right. So I will talk to you soon. Always remember, support is sexy and having it all doesn't mean doing it all alone. Take care.